Hey guys, this is Cam for 15 joined by my co-host, The Red Wolf, here yet again with another One Piece arc review. And man, one, I can't wait to talk about this arc because this arc is just so good. And then two, um, I'm also just in a good mood because of right now we're the election stands. Um, I don't think me or my co-hosts have to say who we voted for, but we are very happy and we're hoping and praying that uh, a certain somebody is going to be winning and uh, another certain somebody is going to be evicted from the White House. Yeah, and let's, and let's, and let's hope it stays that positive. Let's hope. Yes. Um, Anyways, um, going forward with that, that's the only thing we're going to say. So please do not give political in the comment section, please. So if you support the other guy, okay, I get it. But please don't. Be respectful to others, please and thank you. Anyways, we're here to talk about Dress Rosa. Now, we're going to do Dress Rosa in a two-part arc review. This is part one of Dress Rosa. Part two will be coming next week where we talk about the climaxes and everything, the stuff that cleans up the arc. Here we're talking about just strictly the first half. And we're going from the first half of the Dress Rosa arc to the point when Del Flamingo unleashes the birdcage, just to let you guys know. So, okay. We're going to be going from that because this is one of the longest arcs in all of One Piece, not only in the anime form, but the manga as well. You know, I you know I wonder even if my even if my phone is fully charged, it it, it will last that long. <laughs> um, wonder. I haven't read the manga version of Dress Rosa, but um, I know the animated version is hella long. Um, and mostly the reasons why they were hella long is because legit in those episodes they would have like five to ten minutes of legit. The same thing we would see from previous episodes, put in this episode, which would kind of make it drag on. And I'm like, okay, okay, can it please pick up? Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, if you are not a fan of the One Piece anime, read the manga. It's still going to be just as long, but you might save yourself some time um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But, um, yes, let's get into the uh, very intense very story-driven slash very emotional Dress Rosa arc. Now, we where he last left off, left off for our Straw Hat crew, um, they were on their way to Dress Rosa because it's a part of Trafalgar Law's plan. And his plan is essentially was by calling Do Flamingo. He told him, resign from the warlord system, and guess what? We'll hand you Caesar Clown for that. So that's when they get in the paper that Do Flamingo has resigned from a warlord status and stuff like that. Which, fun fact, eventually turns into be a fucking trap. But okay. Um, so, one, the Marines also hear this too. So, they sent Admiral uh, Fujitora over to Dress Rose to set all this whole information out and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, like I, like they said, um, they plan to hand over Caesar Clown at this island um, called Green Bit at 3 p.m. in the sh in the series time, and yeah. Now the reason why they're doing this is to make it a ploy so there's a whole another group that can take out the Smile Factory in Dress Rosa because that's what they're also there for. They're there to take out the Smile Factory producing the Smile Devil Fruits that. So Flamingo eventually ships to Wano for uh, Kaido's little operation going on there. So stuff like that. Now, um, Kinemon, um, he's also at Dress Rose and he also joined the crew because uh, a person named Conjuro, who's with them, helped him and um, Momonosuke escape Dress Rosa and stuff like that. So he's held prisoner there at Dress Rosa and they need to go free him. So that's another reason why Kinemon is also there. Plus, you know, he's also the next uh, the next arc, which is the Zo arc. He's also joining them to see if they can take him to Zo to eventually find out their other ninja friend. 
So, anyways, when they finally dock at Dress Rosa, there is a group. Now, um, let's just say this. The group of um, Nami, Brooke, and Chopper, and Momonosuke. Yeah. Great uh, pairing there, guys. They're stuck on the ship um, till eventually uh, they get themselves into trouble. Um, mm -hmm. Another group is going to be Law, Robin. Um, yeah, Law, Robin, and Usopp, which is going to have, are going to escort Caesar Clown to Doflamingo at the specific time meetup at Greenbit. While the other group is Luffy, Frankie, Sanji, Zoro, and Kinemon. I still look back at that Straw Hat group, and I'm like, you couldn't have at least spared them Frankie or maybe friggin' Sanji? I guess they have too much faith in each other. <laughs> I guess they do. Um, so yeah, now um, it isn't a One Piece arc storyline if group members just don't split off from one another. You already have the three different groups, but then in Luffy's group, you have people splitting up left and right. You have Sanji literally looking at a uh, dance along play thanks to the voluptuous viola that he falls for. Um, listen, who won it? Um, also, um, so, and then Zoro, he sees a fairy, um, take his sword from him, oh. um, and then Luffy kind of splits up in his own direction because he hears, or he sees that at this Colosseum Battle Royale, they're going to be giving away the Mera Mera no Mi. In other words, the Flame Flame Fruit, which is Ace's Devil Fruit. And we all know Luffy cannot have or let anybody have that. And hey, to his credit, you might as well go in and try to retrieve it. You can't eat it and take it, but at least you can have it for, you know, safekeeping as a, I guess, a memory of your brother, Ace. And I did like the fact how Luffy, I mean, not Luffy, um, Frank was like, well, go on, dude. If you want to go get that fruit that's an honorary treasure of your brother, then go ahead and do it. You don't want to regret it and have somebody else eat the devil fruit. So um, that's another thing, which splits Luffy up from the main group and kind of leaves Frankie and Kinemon to them loans themselves and stuff like that. <laughs> now, what we don't, well, what the group doesn't know is this whole thing is a plot or a trap. Yes, it's a trap set up by uh, Doflamingo. And this is one of the traps he set up for Luffy's group of friends. I don't know why she's barking, my dog, but okay. Um, and essentially, the thing is, he found the Mara Mara no me. I don't know where he found it. He eventually was going to hold it in the Coliseum, knowing that Luffy would come to Dress Rosa, and that would attract Luffy to freaking fight for it, which would leave him trapped in the Coliseum, which means he can go do whatever he wants behind the scenes. So he's got Luffy in his little trap. They don't know that yet. Now, in the meantime, so Luffy does not have his identity revealed to essentially the Dress Rosa public. He goes in there with an uh, alter ego. Do you know his altered ego? Uh, the, which one are we talking about again? The... Luffy's Coliseum alter ego. Oh. Would you really, would you really consider it an alter ego if it's just a... <laughs> it's a disguise. It's his, it's his disguise. And the funny thing is they're all wearing disguises. All the Straw Pirates are wearing disguises. Yeah, he goes by Lucy, apparently. How creative. Yes. Um, okay. Um, he enters in the Coliseum, which do you want to go through some of the people he met during the Coliseum? Do I have, do I, do I have to name out all of them? Not all of them, but some of the bigger members. Um, I guess I should. I, I guess I should start out with the with the most memorable, Rebecca. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll talk about her in a second. Go on. Mm -hmm. And what else? What what is what is that one? A uh, big. What is that one guy's name? That that the guy with the pointed the guy with the pointed head. Oh, Bartolomeo. Yeah, Bartolomeo. And, uh, hmm. Who else gets introduced first? Because 
I don't, I don't, I don't really know them all. Uh, I was, I don't know if you remember the guy's name, but he was the one dude who um, was very envious of Luffy's popularity and knew it was Luffy. Oh my god! I, 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 forgot his name. I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Oh my god! You want to say it? Go on. Go on. Uh, that would be Cavendish. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, um, that is the one thing, um, yeah, Cavendish, you know, is the only one at this point in time that knows that Luffy is actually Luffy, and he antagonizes him, antagonizes him throughout the entire thing, he's like, I know who you are, you're Straw Hat Luffy, and he's like, I'm not Straw Hat Luffy, I'm Lucy, um, which, okay, um, also, the way his beard looks is literally a Master Roshi beard he's wearing. <laughs> yes. Um, that's, I, I, I can't. Dress Rosa for the English dub is coming, um, like, more than likely in December, and I cannot wait to hear Dress Rosa dubbed. Even though, technically, if you want to hear Dress Rosa English dub, watch episode of Sabo. Although I heard the voices of Rebecca and Viola and their English dub voices. Not the voices I expected to hear from them. They sound Italian. They have an Italian Roman type of accent. Huh. Yeah. I, then again, it does make sense from, especially from, since they're from an, a place that's kind of Roman ish. Yeah. Yeah, they have, they, and when I mean they have strong Roman accents, um, they have very strong Roman accents. I was like, oh, they, wow. Is it bad? Is it bad, though? Is it bad? It's not bad. I think when I get to watch the Dove Address Rosa, the more I hear it, the more I'll get used to it. Mm. I, I think that's the thing with English dub viewers, if you're an English dub. I think the more you hear a voice, then it's just to grow on you a bit. Is it not what I expected, what they would sound like? No, but hey, at least they're making them specifically, you know, unique and have unique voices than this typical type of girl voices One Piece would give them. But okay, it is what it is. Um, so yeah. Anyways, um, he kind of runs away. Luffy kind of runs away from Cavendish because Cavendish is just, you know, bugging him too much. And that's just... May I just say... I was annoyed by Cavendish in this part of the in this part of the series. Like, really? For that dumb reason you want to hunt down Luffy? <laughs> OMG. Yes. Um now this is when he runs into, well, I would say the third princess type of character in the One Piece storyline. Um, even though technically she's not really a princess, but let's be honest, she's a princess character. She um, she technically is. Yeah. Um, which um you could now a lot of people do not, well, some people from what I've seen do not like Rebecca. I personally like Rebecca. I like her a lot. She has a very tragic backstory. And I do like when her whole storyline is like finally like you know fixed and it's her story is done. You know, the whole emotional moment with Kiros, which almost made me cry up there. Even just thinking about it makes me almost tear up. We'll talk more about that um, near the end in part two. But uh, I do like Rebecca as a character. Um, although she is wearing, for the majority of this arc, wears very revealing outfit. A very revealing outfit. Um, just why, though? <laughs> Oh, yeah, essentially, she's just wearing uh, what you might say a gladi gladiator uh, armor, mm -hmm. but uh, in the form of a uh, bikini. And uh, yeah, um, that's all I can say. No comment. <laughs> um, yeah, now um, this is when Lu Luffy runs into her because um, he, he runs into her because she's looking at the statue of a warrior by the name of Kiros, who was a legendary warrior in Dressrosa who had won, I believe they said 3,000 straight battles, which is crazy. Now, Luffy asks her why she is in or why she's participating in the Coliseum. 
would you like to explain the reason why? She wants to get the player of their fruit to defeat the Flamingo. Yep. Um, although, when I heard that for the first time, I was like, ha! Oh! I don't know if your Mera Mera no Me powers could take him down, even if you were a new user of it. Just, just imagine if Rebecca did eat the Flare Flare fruit instead of Sabo. I think Luffy would be fine with it. He'd probably say, just make sure you take good care of it. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I feel bad that she didn't, though. Yeah. It would have been pretty um, cool. Hmm? It would have been pretty cool if she did, is it? Okay. Um, now, also, Admiral Fujitora is also there in Dress Rosa because he heard of the apparent meetup between Dress, I mean, between Doflamingo and Trafalgar Law in the giving up of Caesar Clown. So he plans and he's preparing himself to get over there to, uh, let's just say, go boinkers. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, Luffy finds out in the Coliseum is uh, he runs into an old, a old antagonist from many arcs ago. I believe you remember that lovely individual. Oh, boy. How, how, how do I tell of him changed back from back then to now. Oh my God, Bellamy, Bellamy, Bellamy. Yes, the spring, spring man himself has returned. And when I first saw him, I was like, "Oh, my. what are you doing here?" Um, and stuff like that. Um, now Bellamy says he's going to take down Luffy because his goal is to essentially join the Don Quixote pirates, or the Do Flamingo pirates, essentially. Um, which, okay. Um, and his whole thing is, he really, uh, let's just say, looks up to Do Flamingo like an idol. Like, the dude is a fanboy, essentially, of Do Flamingo. Yeah. It's nice to say that Do Flamingo, later on, kind of, dude, does not really dirty and messed up. But we'll talk about that in part two. So yeah, um, like I said, there's another dude by the name of Bartolomeo. He also has devil fruit powers and his devil fruit is the Bara Bara no Mi, in other words, the barrier barrier fruit, which essentially by crossing his fingers, he can set up a barrier wall, which in his fight, he actually, go, he actually fights against a fishman named Hack, who's in the Revolutionary Army. Hack actually breaks his arm or breaks his fist you know, when, you know, he activates it. So, yeah, um, Bartolomeo, he's also a fanboy of Luffy himself. And when I mean a fanboy... Luffy senpai. <laughs> yes. Um, a huge fanboy of Luffy, if not the entire Straw Hat crew. And to say that, you know, some of these characters we have in the Coliseum were, like, very integral to the Dressrosa plotline, my God, I, I, I was like, Jesus, you're making characters like you would think you would care no, give no craps to. And you're like, Oda somehow made these guys relevant to the main storyline in Dressrosa. And they all had a, at least a certain moment. Not all of the characters, but most of them had a moment. So, yeah. Um, and then there's another guy in the Coliseum. I know there's so many people. Um, there's another guy that knows Luffy, and he's not fooled by the disguise, and that is uh, Don Chin Chow, which is a very uh, tall, giant, bearded old man. Um, you could potentially call him Santa himself, who uh, holds a grudge against Luffy because of, well, let's just say Garp rounded out his head. Um, and he blames Garp for that, and now apparently he's going to, I guess you could say the sins of the grandfather. Um, he's going to take out his aggression on Luffy, even though Luffy had nothing to do with him. And he's even like, and Luffy's like, I had nothing to do with that. So what the hell are you talking about, my dude? But uh, Chin Chao is not playing around, which when they have their fight, 
I think that's another very underrated Luffy fight, in my opinion. Don Shinjo versus Luffy is very underrated. That's actually that's actually pretty legit. That fight was actually pretty good. You know, even though Luffy wasn't well, we didn't know about Gear Four at the time, but he wasn't going all out, but he was still using Gear Segundo and uh Gear Thirdo and stuff like that. But you know, Don Jinchao was a very strong person. So um yeah. Anyways, um, we cut over to uh, Luffy, I mean, not Luffy, uh, Sanji and Viola. Now, let's just say Viola's kind of playing smitten with Sanji for the time being. And uh, what did she try to do, my friend? Um, she, she tried to... Uh... What was what, what, what she trying to do again? Oh, that, no she was trying to kill him. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Well, do you know who gave her the order to kill or try to kill him? Do Flamingo. Yes. Um. Fun fact. Um. Uh, well, before that. Um. Well, what does Sanji? I guess you can answer the thing, or you can tell the audience the thing that kind of makes Viola change her stance on Sanji. Well, I guess it was the shout, I guess it was the shout out that Sanji made that like he believes in women's tears apparently. Yeah. I don't remember it very much, but I do remember he protected her. Um, that's what I do mm -hmm. remember. And that's why she kind of changed the thing because she saw, oh, is this like a man who can save my country? And stuff like that. And that's when she eventually tells Sanji the whole deets with what's going on. One, she says that, yeah, she's in the Don Quixote family, but uh, she's not really a part of it by blood. Um, let's just say she's been uh, forced to be in that family. And if you didn't know, I'm just gonna let you guys know if you never knew in the first place. Uh, Do Flamingo, let's just say this. Do Flamingo did sleep with Viola. And they did go all the way. I'm not even joking. I did not, I did not know that I actually. Oh no. I did not see that. Yeah, it is stated, I think sometimes from her, that the two legit, you know, did it. I don't know if she was down, but it was definitely potentially maybe forceful type of stuff, especially knowing his devil fruit powers. Oh my god, I'm picturing it. Um, yeah, like I said, I, and this is over for like, I don't know how long he took over, I think they said like 10 years ago he took over Dressrosa. Um, so uh, for her to be subjected to all that takes a lot of balls for her to essentially uh, take it from Doflamingo for, I guess, 10 years. Like I said, mm -hmm. we don't know what was going on in there. If she enjoyed it or if she didn't enjoy it, maybe she kind of played it off like she did. But I guarantee <laughs> you, nine out of 10 times, Doflamingo forced her against her own will of his Ito Ito no Mi powers to uh, do that stuff. But hey, I'm just saying. Do you did you 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 actually believe that they, that that he actually did it to her that so many times? It's factually proven that they did that stuff. Uh, you can you can look it up. There's like not only hints. I think it's also confirmed that they did that stuff. And plus, we all know Doflamingo was doing this to get at King Riku. So, mm -hmm. you know. That too. Um, yeah, so that's when she tells him so because one, you know, she hates Do Flamingo because, well, he took over her country. That's when she tells Sanji, oh, yeah, the whole thing about him resenting as a warlord, yeah, that was kind of a lie. He really is not um, a warlord anymore. He is still a warlord, which Sanji hears this. He's like, shit. Um, he, so he tries to contact Law. Um, one of the things, um, 
Well, first, the law of Robin and Usopp have to cross this very dangerous bridge to get to a green bit that has these, uh, I think they're called flying fish or something like that. No, not flying fish. These devil looking fish with these evil smiley faces that look like piranhas in the One Piece world. I forgot what they were called, those fishes were called. Um, but uh, yeah, that's when you see Del Flamingo meet up. Now, Robin and Usopp, they eventually fall to the kingdom of the Tontadas. We'll get into that in a second. Um, so, um, yeah, this is when Law is essentially cornered. He's not only cornered by Doflamingo, but he's cornered by Admiral Fujitora, who is one of the new admirals in the, in, the, um, in the Navy line. And I just also thought, I just also remembered this too. Um, so we all know the admiral system is this. So Akainu is the, is the fleet admiral. Kizaru is still is one of the two remaining admirals coming back. Fujitora is another new one. We do not know who the third one is, I believe. I think we seen what I don't know. I think we seen what the third admiral looks like, but we don't know what he can do. Fuji, Fuji, Fujitora replaced uh, Aokiji, right? Yeah, Fujitora replaced Aokiji, and there's another guy that replaced Akainu. Mm. So, yeah. Um Okay, um, yeah, so this is really bad for Locke because he's screwed. And, uh, yeah. Um, so one, like I said, they all find out it was a setup. Now, let's just say things here in this battle get crazy. One, um, what does Fujitora do, buddy, that uh, kind of changes, I guess, the battlefield? Um... His, his powers are to, yes, Cr make craters on the ground, I guess? I don't know. Oh, he's not a huge ass rock. Mm, yeah. No, I don't know if that's, <laughs> I think that was an asteroid, to be honest. I think that was an asteroid, which, okay, he can call asteroids from space. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> what is his devil fruit? That's my question. Uh, I didn't put his devil fruit um, title in here, but um, I'll probably put it in the next video. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, that whole thing is an issue. Law eventually gets beat up pretty badly um, there, but uh, yeah, um, we'll get to that soon too. Um, now Usopp and Robin run into the Tantatas, which are these little tiny small people that apparently um, also heard of Mon Block Nolan, which is way back to uh, Skypea stuff. Um, also, they kind of, well, somewhat tie, um, well, Robin to the ground. And uh, I forgot to mention this, but I'm sorry, but Robin, it, her best outfit is in this arc. I kid you not. <laughs> Her best outfit is in this arc, hands down. Very, very, uh, I, I guess, know. I guess, I guess I have to agree with you on that, yeah. <laughs> like, they don't hold back. I do like the nice little hat she wears, the white hat she wears. Um, the skirt she wears is very, like, short, and like I said, the cleavage is very revealing. My favorite Robin costume Hands down, and it got it has me like because you know I love me some Nico Robin. Um, they eventually run to, into the Tontadas thanks to Usopp saying he's a hero. It essentially makes the Tontadas release Robin, and eventually we find out from Leo and the Tontadas is they're also against um, Del Flamingo, and they're planning essentially a raid to uh, the castle to stop him so that ties in the whole thing with the whole the fact um interesting people what did you think of the tontadas when you first saw them they're really they're really trusting <laughs> just easily i mean they, they, they were antagon they were antagonizing robin for a little bit until she's she like she easily talked them down like okay you're our friends now <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. uh what did you think of the one tontada that was uh meeting up with zoro <laughs> That shenanigan stuff. <laughs> even, she, even she is tired of his, of his ways of direction. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay. Um, back to the Coliseum. I know, we're going all over the place in Dress Rosa. Um, now we see another familiar face that we haven't seen since, uh, well, Marineford, our the Summit War. Um, and that is, uh, well, I guess you can say Blackbeard's right-hand man. I don't know what is, I don't know who is right-hand man. It's either um, Jesus Burgess, or I'm just going to call him Jesus Burgess. Are um, hold on for a second, guys. Are we okay? We're back, guys. We're back. Um, yeah, as I was saying, I don't know who you could consider Blackbeard's right hand man, Burgess or Shira. You, uh, I mm, well, Shira is pretty much the newest member, so I'd say Burgess. I guess you can say Burgess. Um, yeah, and essentially, um. Burgess, um, because Luffy runs into him, and also Blackbeard's on the line, and you know, giving him a little lovely thing. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, he's he he knows Straw Hat Luffy's there. And he's like, well, it's great to finally meet you again, Straw Hat. Um, you know, Blackbeard, he kind of antagonizes Luffy there. And stuff like that. Now Burgess is there to retrieve the Maromara or the Maromara no me. Essentially, what Blackbeard's crew is, apparently they like to gang up of getting a lot of strong devil fruits. Mm-hmm. So uh Jesus uh Jesus Burgess is there to try to get the Maromara no me. And obviously Luffy does not want the crew of the person who essentially killed Ace to get their hands on it. Um, thank goodness he didn't, but, uh, yeah. So, um, anyways, after that, um, Rebecca kind of tries to, uh, let's just say, uh, trick Luffy and trap Luffy, in other words, trying to kill him, essentially. But, um, Luffy kind of doesn't fall for it to the point, like, she's, like, because she's laying down on the ground. There's a part where Luffy's on top of her. And she's just laying on the ground, and she's like, go ahead, just do it. I know you boys. Do whatever you want to do to me. My body is yours, essentially. Um, but Luffy, we know Luffy is like, what the hell are you talking about? Why would I do that? Um, and stuff like that, which we kind of touch apart a little bit of Rebecca's backstory here and stuff like that. Now, other than the part where she wants to... Uh, when the Maramara know me to defeat Doflamingo. Do you remember the other reason why she also wants to do that? Um, cause she, she doesn't, she doesn't want people protecting her anymore. Yeah, essentially. Um, she, now we, we've seen the toy soldier earlier, but the toy soldier here in the storyline is also a huge thing. Um, we know, in her backstory, it's explained that after her mother, Scarlet, died, the toy soldier was there to take care of her and be a fatherly figure to her, not knowing that it was actually her real father. Um, You're not supposed to say that yet. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Um, yeah. Um, and essentially, she wants to win so she can protect the toy soldier, um, which... It's a way of saying thank you for being there for me, essentially. Um, the toy soldier taught her how to fight and protect herself, so when she got older, she would know. That's why, you know, she can defend herself, and I guess you can say she's not a very offensive threat. She's more of a defensive fighter. Um, if, um, but, you know, we see um, that, um, one... She's also very much booed and hated amongst the kingdom of Dressrosa because uh, she is descended of King Riku, who, let's just say, thanks to Doflamingo's takeover, painted King Riku and his family in a bad name and stuff like that, Um, which was pretty bad, heartbreaking to see. Um, Now, the toy soldier... um, who is talking to Frankie, because Frankie brings up the mention, he's like, yo, uh, why are there a lot of toys around here and stuff like that? And essentially, uh, what does the toy soldier say? What's the deal with the toys? You can say it, because I know you know that. 
uh, like they, like they're actually they're actually like real people in like is that what he said like they're, they're real people in like in a toy's body I guess yeah mm -hmm. um more? oh if you want to say more if you want to know if you want to say to the audience who's turning them into toys oh yeah um like spe specifically who or just should i just say doflamingo family it's either or it's up to you buddy yeah like there, there, there's there's a certain little girl in uh in Dol in the doflamingo's family who's been turning these uh people into toys which pretty much erases the the, the memories that other people have of them and now they're they're just there yeah. I'm gonna, that's that's how i would explain it yeah which is a very scary devil fruit power to not only wield but a very de scary devil fruit to go up against when it comes yeah. to literally turning somebody into an, really what you can say a moving inanimate object and making the other people literally forget any traces of them which may is all say, in dope may i just may i just say that that okay i shouldn't even be talking about this but may i just say when i saw the backstory of when uh what when when, uh, when scarlet died <laughs> I, oh, we'll, I, I, we'll, we'll get to that yeah i shouldn't i shouldn't even be saying this but that's like the most i i, I was legit close to crying right there yeah um this is kind of also where we kind of get into the backstory of the whole thing. Now we find out that King Riku is actually in the Colosseum. He's wearing a helmet so nobody knows who he is. But the whole thing there is this. So um, I think it was 10 years ago, you know, Doflamingo essentially walked up into Dressrosa looking to take over because he felt like it was his land to rule which we'll get into the backstory of um, Doflamingo in part two of Dress Rosa. And King, Ruku, King Riku vehemently, you know, even I think even Doflamingo tried to pay him off from what I remember. Um, and he's like, no, you can't have this country, buddy. So then this crafty mother effer, um, Doflamingo, you know, ain't gonna go down without a fight. And essentially, he, not, he, he forces essentially the people of Dress Rosa to attack each other in cold blood, using his Ito Ito no me, or his string string fruit powers. And then he also makes King Riku do essentially the same thing. And it paints King Riku in a bad light, which made the, king, the people of Dressrosa hate him. And then Doflamingo with his family comes in to be the so-called heroes of Dressrosa and essentially save the Dressrosa kingdom and for some reason, is now the new leader. He's a crafty, he's a crafty one, look at that. Or not new leader, the new king of Dressrosa, which, okay, that, ha, huh, you really are a shady person. That's an understatement. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so, and then another thing too, they actually actually bring up because Law is actually shocked. Like, whoa, whoa, how are you? Not, how are you able to keep your, you know, warlord position a, even after you resign, which has ties into the world government and Marie's was, oh, which is something to do with Doflamingo's backstory that we'll get into um, in part two and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, that's the thing. Now, it cuts over back to the part where Law and Doflamingo are fighting, and Doflamingo kind of tells Law, oh yeah, your little allies, <laughs> let's just say uh, there's one of my family members on their ship about to take him out, and stuff like that, which, um, by this person named uh, Giola, essentially, Nami, Brooke, and Chopper have to fight. Um, and what happens is she kind of turns their ship into a, uh, what she calls a masterpiece of art. What she calls? 
Yeah, and for some reason, they just had to, uh, Chiefs really censored Nami. Instead of turning her into the very voluptuous Nami we all love and know, turn into a flat-chested work of art. <laughs> Someone's salty. Yes. Um, but the good thing is, they eventually do beat Giola. And this kind of throws a uh, Doflamingo's little, I guess you can say, wrench in his plans. And he didn't definitely see that coming. He thought, you know, Giola would take care of the uh, remaining Straw Pirates. But uh, no. Uh, nothing works because, you know, plot. Um, so Doflamingo's headed over there to take care of that. And, um, yeah, also because Law tells them, yo, sail away, head to Zoe. We'll catch up with you guys later. Um, but Del Flamingo here is that he's like a... Um, he literally... Now, be, the, now, the most thing is this. Um, you know, when you get to this point, you're wondering, how is he freaking flying? The thing is this. He's actually using his strings to essentially make himself look like he's flying, essentially. So, yeah, but where, is it, but, where is he, but where is he connecting them to? Like, I forgot where they say he connects him to. Um, I, I forgot. I have to rewatch to see where he's connecting, but that's the reason why. Um, so definitely, yeah. I think it's. I think he must be tying. I think it's. I think from what I remember, he's tying a string somewhere. You know where the water's at, like you know, you know the the least the sea level of the water, and he's just like, oh, oh, oh. In other words, he's kind of doing a Spider-Man type of thing, but he looks like he's flying. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, let's just say, uh, who comes in to kind of help out the people on the ship, which I did not see coming. <laughs> oh, Sanji. Yes. Sanji confronts Dolph Lamingo and he kind of gets a fight with him. Um, mm -hmm. even though it's the one of the quickest fights, uh. Sanji, for the most part, kind of held his own for a bit until Doflamingo kind of got the upper hand on him. Mm -hmm. I will say this. Doflamingo did acknowledge Sanji's strength, and he's like, you're actually pretty strong. Um, which, okay, at least he's taking Sanji serious, but, uh, you know, Sanji's too much for Doflamingo to handle, and uh, let's just say Sanji did the best he could. So uh, he gets wounded badly. Eventually, they leave. Um, and thanks to Law getting them, you know, kind of getting up there and kind of distracting Do Flamingo a bit, um, they use a cootie burst to get out of there. And essentially, that crew's on their way to Zoe. Only problem is uh, Big, Mom, Big Mom's uh, fleet ship is freaking trailing them when we, last, when we last go back to them, which has ties into Whole Cake Island arc. And for that, that's the last we see of our crew members for that side till Zoe and for Sanji till Whole Cake Island. Mm -hmm. So that's it, which starts the whole little arc thing where, oh, we have one group of Strat Pirates here. Another group will be featured later on. So obviously the big crew that's going to be featured here is Luffy, Zoro, Robin, Usopp, and Frankie. Those are the crew members that are going to get the most shine. Well, other than Luffy. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, um, after that, um, uh, after that, um, we do find out this. So, if you lose in the Coliseum, you get sent down to, like, this basement area where they turn you into toys. Scary. So, this is definitely a huge trap. And stuff like that. And also, the person turning these people into toys is a girl by the name of Sugar. That is much older than what she looks like. She's older? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that you mentioned that, yes, she is. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Now, um, if you thought things couldn't get any more hectic is... uh, Yeah, so um, Luffy's just talking to... Um, you know, Zoro and the others outside and stuff like that. And the next thing you know, um, <laughs> uh, here comes a flying Trafalgar log, badly damaged, with 
Bill Flamingo trailing right behind him. It's not bad enough. He shoots a few pellet guns into his chest. And uh, Luffy's watching this at the same time. Um, <laughs> that was his reaction. Yeah. Um, essentially, Bill Flamingo's like, so you're going to either get your brother's devil fruit or are you going to stop me? The choice is yours, hero. Like that Spider-Man reference I did there. Uh-huh. <laughs> what? That's what the Green Goblin said in the very first Spider-Man movie. Even though Luffy doesn't like to be called a hero. So. Yes. Well, I guess Straw Hat, um, if to be more thing. Now, Luffy definitely wants to help out, you know, um, or what he likes to call Trophy, or Law. Um, but he can't get out because he can't find an exit to get out of the Colosseum because he's trapped in there. Um, and plus, he kind of doesn't want to lose really the Mero Mero know me, but Bartolomeo is like, don't worry, Luffy Senpai, I will win it for you and bring it directly to you, which, okay, nice guy, nice guy, nice guy. But um, it's too bad because uh, let's just say another character takes his place. Would you like to care to? Talk, of, talk about a blast from the past. This man, after all of these years, comes to Luffy. Saying saying stuff like, "I'll be getting the, the dub for and stuff like, it's, it's been it's, and it's been a long time, Luffy and all that stuff." And Luffy's all like, hmm? "Who are you?" And Luffy slowly starts remembering after seeing his face, like, <laughs> "Yeah, yep. Sabo." <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, um, the third brother in Luffy's sworn arms brother, Sabo, is not dead. He is alive and well. His also his little cohort or his little partner is Koala as well, which is the same girl that Fisher Tiger helped out all those years ago, which I remember first watching that. I was like, this girl looks familiar. And then only after I was done with Dress Rosa, I remember, like, she was the girl from Fisher Tiger way back at Fishman Island. Oh my gosh. And stuff like that. And I do find it a nice, I, I do really find it nice that Hack, who is a fishman himself, is teamed up with them too. Um, so it's a nice full, full circle type of thing going on there. And they all work for the Revolutionary Army as well. Um, Robin does know Asabo and Koala for her time being in the Revolutionary Army. I don't know why either Sabo didn't bring it up to her. Like, hey, do you know my brother Luffy or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. You know, you know, the reason why she's probably happy to finally see her crew members when she first saw them again. So maybe that's not the first thing that came to her mind. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so essentially, Sabo eventually takes the mantle of being Lucy and he's like, I'll win the Mara Mara no me. Or you. Um, now, Rebecca's in her match, but uh, a thing that happens is Cavendish kind of transforms into his cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Or in other words, his uh, crazy mode, uh, which is Hakaba. And essentially, this dude is a killing demon. I have a question for you. Okay. What, 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 would, that, would that version of Cavendish actually be a match for Dolph Flamingo? Okay. <laughs> I think that I mean, it was swat him like a fly. Mm. I don't know. That's pretty that's a pretty crazy alter ego. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I, I I don't think Hakubo would stand a chance against Doflamingo. Because Doflamingo, regardless, even though Hakuba is really fast, Doflamingo is really fast himself. Mm-hmm. I guess so. So I'm yeah. Not- not to mention crap. Oh, yeah. Now, Hakuba, he, this is like, his, like we said, his alter ego state where this other, you know, state just takes over his body and, you know, just, he, he just goes berserk. He literally. So, 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 it, so it only take it only takes over when he's, when he's asleep, right? I, I, think, so. I think so. 
Hmm. I find that really hard for him. Yeah, he essentially beats everybody. And when I mean everybody in the ring, everybody. But one person. And that is Rebecca. She managed to dodge one of his essentially killing, killing strikes at a level that fast, which I think some people believe that she actually, I think she knows hockey, um, which is the reason why she was able to avoid that, or observation hockey at the slightest, which I guess would make sense. I guess. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but uh, because of it, she eventually wins the round because I think he passes out eventually, so... Yeah, and then goes back to sleep. So Rebecca goes on to the final round to compete for the Mara Mara no Mi. Now, that's when we cut over to the final match, which is like uh, Sabo, Bartolomeo, um, Jesus Burgess, Rebecca, and another member of the Don Quixote family, mem from the family line, and that is uh, Diamante, who <clears throat> is the killer of Scarlet. Um, which, you know, he doesn't tell Rebecca till literally later, later on. Um, but yeah, um, the, the fight here, the whole Battle Royale fight was pretty cool. Um, it would have been awesome to see what Luffy would have done in there against these competitors, uh, mostly against Diamante and Burgess. But hey, it's all right. Sabo can take place. Now, Sabo does use hockey as well. Um, he does have some pretty interesting techniques himself. But then again, he manages to uh, get the Mara Mara no Mi, eats it, and essentially the only hole, he also holds Rebecca in his arms like a princess, and he manages to take off the entire ring so he can kind of do his thing of what he was supposed to do here. He can. Yes. Um, he, does all, he also does a fire fist. Um, now, Frankie does get to the toy factory, but he is confronted by Senor Pink who we'll get into his backstory in part two, which is probably one of the more sympathetic and emotional backstories for a villain you could get. Yeah, actually, that, I, I actually respect him the most out of all the others. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to, we'll talk about his backstory next week. Um, now, Luffy, Zoro, Kinemon, and Viola eventually meet up, and they're headed to the palace to essentially, well, <laughs> let's just say uh, save law here. Um, in the meantime, the Tontatas and uh, the Toy Soldier have concocted their plans to raid the mansion as well, which the Toy Soldier is already in the palace. Um, and uh, the, now, before Luffy and the others meet up with him, um, they're essentially confronted by a uh, very interesting dude who becomes more of a damn nuisance in this arc. And that is... Self, well, we don't see it yet or hear his voice yet, but uh, that is Pika. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. The funny Pika. Um, anyways, the devil fruit he has is the Ishi Ishi no Mi. In other words, it's easy. The stone stone fruit. Essentially, he can turn his body into anything that's stone-related. So if he wants to become one with the wall, he can do that. Which, he was a legit problem this entire arc. And we won't talk about Zoro's badass moment until next week. But he's kind of Zoro's main antagonistic figure here. Um, now, Zoro is like, Luffy, you go on ahead with Viola, I'll take care of him. But uh, obviously, Zoro doesn't beat him yet. And stuff like that. Now, this is when we get the toy soldier's backstory after Luffy saves him from his head almost blowing up thanks to uh, Gladius, one of the, the spiky-haired individual in the Don Quixote family line as well. So the toy soldier's backstory is this. Um, and this is after... Um, and I'll say, I'll say this first. So anyways, in the underground basement of Dressrosa, um, the whole thing where um, the Tone Totters are trying to raid that, that stuff, um, one, you have Robin pretending to be somebody working in the Don Quixote family line, but then eventually Treble sees through her disguise 
And then we have the uh, little girl Sugar, or whatever, however old she is, um, essentially start turning people into freaking toys. Tontadas into toys. She turns Robin into a toy. And this is when Usopp freaks the hell out. Now, to me, yeah. I... I, yeah, I, I think at that moment when uh, when uh, Usopp like started like being a little more cowardish, even though he's supposed to be a little more brave and stuff, at that moment, I feel I feel like the reason he got all cowardly is because he forgot about Rob. I don't I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know that too. Um, and I did. Um, if you do not watch uh, Totally Not Marks, um, um, which is another YouTuber who's recently been doing One Piece reviews. Um, he actually brought up the fact, you know, in that instant, like Denzel said, he for, Usopp forgot Robin. And he actually tied it back, way back to the Ennis Lobby arc, when he was pretending to be Sogo King, and that was his way of showing his bravery side. So you take Rob, that whole Robin storyline away, he's not as brave. So now I guess I can uh, kind of understand why Usopp was freaking out. Now, would you want to care to explain what happened <laughs> when uh, it looked like Usopp was about to be turned into a toy? Um, he ate, he ate the, that, that, that one blueberry, which is all like hot and spicy, right? Yeah. <laughs> he ate it and all of a sudden he started breathing fire and which, which freaked sugar out. <laughs> and, and then that's when she passed out and then that's where her double fruit suddenly got deactivated and then everybody Everybody on the island who got turned into a toy pretty much got turned back into their normal human form. As well as everybody being like, I remember, he's still alive, and stuff like that. Um, also, this is when we get the funny name of God Usopp. He's a god, man. He, he saved them all. Literally. The giant, the one giant from uh, Elbath, he's literally holding up with the light shining down on him, like some kind of, honestly, like Jesus himself. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I died when I saw this. I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me, bro. Which, by the time this arc ends, legit, his bounty says God Usopp. Hey, he deserved that title after all he did. So, one of his bounties was Sogo King this time. God, it was up. And shit. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Now, this is when it cuts back to um, what's going on in the um, palace. We see the toy soldier eventually turn back into his old human self. And we find out that he was the statue of the guy in the Colosseum, and he is Kiros. And this is when Viola remembers, and she tells Luffy, that's Kiros. That is, you know, not on, that is not only my brother-in-law, um, but um, that is Rebecca's father and stuff like that. And this is when we get into his backstory. So Kiros' backstory was, he was kind of like a boy out in the slums, essentially just picking fights with whoever he wanted to pick fights with. And um, King Riku saw him and he saw the potential he had in him. And essentially he kind of took him in under his wing and looked after him like his own son, um, essentially. Um, Kiros did the whole Colosseum battles where he won like 3,000 battles in a row. And when King Riku saw this, he made him be like a commander in his army, um, as well as kind of being the protector of his daughter, Scarlet. Now, um, like any other uh, fairy tale like story, um, the commander in chief of an army fell in love with the king's daughter, or they got super close to one another. And mm -hmm. let's just say they uh, fell in love with one another. Although at this time, Kiros is, I believe, like 20 in his early 20s. I think he's like 23, as they say. You wanna know how old Scarlet is? 15, I think. 15 or 17. No, she was 15. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, really, <laughs> really? Yeah. Um. Yes, they fell in love, and you know, they told. She told. They told King Riku. They and the dad knew. And you know, Kiros is like, "I'm sorry. Like, I know I shouldn't be doing this and stuff like that." But obviously, Scarlet really loved Kiros and stuff like that and changed his life. But um, the thing is, Scarlet is eventually is next in line to rule the Dressrosa kingdom. And the thing is, you know, she can't, you know, be married or hook up to a guy by the name of Kiros because of what he was and stuff like that. Because, and also too, Kiros isn't of royal blood as well. He has no royal blood in his body whatsoever. So. It wouldn't make any sense. So this is when I thought was very sweet. Scarlet's like, I don't want to be princess of Dressrosa. I want to live my life out with the man I love. And she manages to forgo being a princess. She gives that title to her sister Viola. Um, um, they fake her death to make her think like she died of some illness or something like that. And they have Kiros and Re eh, not Rebecca, um, Scarlet um, live out in this flower field, essentially on the outside of Dressrosa where no one would know that Ro our Scarlet is still alive. And in this time zone, they had Rebecca, obviously, and stuff like that. And this is when the sad part happened. Now, obviously we all know that during the time when, um, Dressrosa, Dressrosa was being taken over by um, Joe Flamingo. Kiros has seen all this, and he wants to essentially, you know, save the king and help the king whatever way he can. He manages to go to the king, and that's where he sees Dressrosa, well, not Dressrosa, Del Flamingo, um, essentially proclaiming he's the new ruler of Dressrosa. And Kiros is clearly against that, but... uh. He tries to go in to try to attack Del Flamingo, but that's when he gets turned into a toy by Sugar, and things go from bad to worse. He essentially, you know, has or finds the dead body of Scarlet, and well, she's still conscious at this point, but Scarlet's literally on death's door, and he dies in her arm, or she dies in. Kiros's arm as the toy soldier, sadly, Scarlet didn't know who he was truly, which was even more of a gut punch right there. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then it just was even worse when he takes the dead body of Scarlet to Rebecca and said, I'm sorry, I couldn't save her. And I was like, the, I'm like, Rebecca and Kiros has probably had some of the most tragic, you know, things happen to them just by one man. And the crazy thing is this, too. You know, and it's funny, too, because they kind of bring up this philosophy by the time they bring up the birdcage. Um, the fact that, you know, everyone in Dress Rosa is a puppet to Do Flamingo, just from his strings, essentially, which is a very freaking coincidence. That is devil fruit power is strings. Yep. And, you know, uh, and this is also the thing. Dress Rosa essentially is like Alabasta, just more longer and more advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and like legit, word for word, you can compare things. Doflamingo, Crocodile, both warlords at their respective times, um, both looking over, well, Crocodile was looking to take over Alabasta, Del Flamingo already did, but still, they used crafty measures to get in good and try to overthrow the government. Del Flamingo succeeded, Crocodile almost succeeded. Essentially, Del Flamingo it, did what Crocodile kinda didn't do, and that's overthrow a whole nation and a whole country. 
and stuff like that. And also, just to let you know, Dress Rosa is in the family line of um, the world nobles, the original countries from way back in the void century. So stuff like that. So, so uh, huh? Celestial dragons, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Now, um, the thing is, after he turns back to his old self, also in the backstory, he did cut off his leg to get out of these, this um, Sea Prism Stone Cuff when he's still a human back in the backstory. But that's why you see him when he's a toy with one leg because he cut his leg off. Um, so when he turns back into a human, what does he do, Denzel, to Do Flamingo that had us all leave, left in shock? Chop off Do Flamingo's head. I saw this. I was like, you cannot be serious. One chop like that? I mean, I knew Kiros was going to be strong, but this. But, uh, <laughs> boy, were we fooled because uh, it's not like Doflamingo had backup plans for backup plans this entire arc up to this point. And we find out that through his Devil Fruit powers, Doflamingo can make stream copies of himself. Which, okay, great. And this is when Doflamingo's like, you know what? I'm done with this. You, you know, you guys really just, you know, you, you're thwarting my plans, aren't you? You know? And I'm just going to thwart your plans even more. That's when he gets to the top of the tower. He does a whole little super boo type of technique type of thing. But the difference is he doesn't have fire key blasts that attack people. Um, he fires a stream full of strings to the outside of Dress Rosa, containing everything inside the city of Dress Rosa. And essentially, this is when we get introduced to the birdcage. And it's his, well, now that everybody knows my true intentions, and now that everybody knows or the true players know about my thing, they're going to go on and probably tell to the people that uh, I'm a false king. And I can't have that happen. Um, and essentially, He's not only going to try to do the, the birdcage in a way to get rid of just the Straw Hat Pirates, to get rid of everybody so nobody knows the secret, the truth of Dress Rosa. Also, because if you know, you know, the people who recently turned back into toys are telling their families, like, Del Flamingo is a false king. He freaking play us! And stuff like that. And that's why Del Flamingo's like, well, now that everybody knows my secret, everybody's going to die. So that's why he sets up the bird cage, and that's where we're gonna leave it off for this arc review. Um, what did what were your thoughts about the bird cage as Del Flamingo's last dish resort? Oh my God, like now that they're like on a race against time. <laughs> yeah. Then which which made things even more complicated now? Um, you can somewhat compare this to the. Uh, I would say the bomb back in Alabasta. The only difference is here, I think it was kind of more threatening because uh, Don Flamingo was really trying to kill everybody, like legit. Um, not trying to say, you know, Crocodile was trying to do the same thing, but here, he's you could literally escape the whole Alabasta stuff and get out of there in the nick of time um, if you had enough time to get out of there and escape. Here, you're essentially confined to the city of Dress Rosa, and it's either you get sliced up by these very strong strings, or you somehow do it, and you beat Do Flamingo, which is what Luffy and company need to do in order to stop the birdcage. Like I said, that's where we're gonna leave off, and next week is gonna be just battle, 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 until a bunch of other stuff, so I think we did good enough because I didn't want to be here for literally three hours or two hours just talking Dress Rosa. So I think we talked pretty good about here. Yes, indeed. Oh, <laughs> I know this so, video won't be long, but wow. Yeah. Um, so anyways, guys, um, we're going to get out of here. Again, again, we'll see you guys next week for uh, One Piece Dress Rosa arc part two as, we, as that will be our closing to Dress Rosa. And yeah, again, sorry for getting this up late, too. I know I said I wanted to get this up Monday or Tuesday. 
But, you know, this whole week is just hecticness, hecticness because of the election, you know, oh, yeah. like that. So, you know, I kind of thought, I'm like, you know what, since it's election day on Tuesday, I'm not going to upload it. So this is being recorded on Wednesday, and it's going to go up probably sometime in the afternoon on Thursday. Um, but obviously, you're checking this video out if, you know, you know this. But uh, anyways, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on the Dress Rosa arc. And listen, we already know. So if you want to talk any part of Dress Rosa, go ahead. But if you want to keep it something about regarding the first half of Dress Rosa, go on with that. We'll be much more. Um, as well as hit that subscribe button to uh, get more One Piece arc content. We only got a few more videos to do for this. And then, um, yeah, that's it. But after I do my One Piece arc reviews, I'm more than likely doing this by myself, and I will be reviewing the One Piece movies and specials and give my thoughts on them. Um, I don't think my co-host will be on them because he doesn't want to watch them, but it's up to him. I left that open for him. I mean, I haven't watched them all, so I can't, I can't really see how I would be in them. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, as well as the notification button to get more updates to whatever I upload to this channel. Anyways, guys, we're going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys, and I mean, hopefully you guys, please, in this crazy time, if you're in the United States, please stay safe out there. Like this whole election stuff, as much as, you know, I'm trying to keep updates and tips on that, please, for the safety of a lot of people. Depending however this goes, there is going to be a crazy thing that happens. So please stay safe out there. Um, I guess I would say keep your head on a swivel. Because um, things are going to only get crazy by the time this whole stuff ends. Um, so please stay safe out there. Not only because of that, you know, the ramifications after the election, but also obviously the virus. So stay safe because of that. And yeah, so this has been Camper 15. And the Red Wolf. We're going to be signing out for you guys for, well, this night. So hopefully you guys like this video and we'll see you guys on the next video. Still then guys, have a great rest of your day. Peace.